Hey guys, Maya Paveza here. Okay, I was originally going to show you how to hack um, a authentic, certified, verified dot loop and DocuSign, or I'm sorry, dot loop. You can't hack the DocuSign, um, and I'll show you why. But I decided that showing you how to do it probably not a good idea. Just know that it can be done, and therefore um, you need to make sure that you're following the three best practices and principles for verifying that a document meets eSign and SEAL standards. So what I have here is a dot loop downloaded um, agreement of sale, Delaware agreement of sale. Look, we make it nice and easy with eight pages. And you'll notice that these are the signatures or the initials here and the date. Um, and that it states dot loop verification. And Continue down, down, and down. But within the document itself, it just says dot loop verified. You don't see anything in the signatures that indicate that it's a valid signature. You don't have the option to validate it, and really, there's nothing going on as far as that goes. Now, I could potentially now I've got Acrobat Pro, so I could drop something in in here and say. Uh, seller to pay 100% of closing costs. Okay, I've annotated it now, and now I can save it. And still no indication of any problem. Um, and this is what, the verification link. Trying to connect. Okay, I'll allow it. Let it go where it wants to go here. And of course, my connection is going to be slow, so let's see what it takes us to for a dot loop verification. All right, so it's telling me agreement of sale for Delaware residential property, verification code, document eight pages, signature 17, and it's going to note which each and every one of them is. Um, security level password provided. It does give you an IP address. It doesn't indicate the email address. Um, so, but again, more importantly, it's still verifying a document that I just added this to. So I'm not hacking it in the way that I can go in because there is a way to hack it and go back to, let me scroll back up to page one here, and I can change the numbers. Okay, now let's compare it to the DocuSign. And these are both in Acrobat Pro. Now notice immediately, signed and all signatures are valid. Okay. Um, and what I should have probably already pointed out before was that if I wanted accessibility, uh, sign and verify, you know, the security, I can't edit the document, can't encrypt the certificate, can't really change the security levels uh, or anything on it. And you can see all of these things as well in Acrobat Reader. And let me show you that again over here now on the dot loop on the security. I can edit it. I can edit with certain, you know, I can pretty much do anything to it and it's not really showing the audit trail. It's not showing the authentication. It's not showing you know, all of the three basic best practices. So let's go back to the DocuSign again. Okay, so here you have it. All signatures are valid. Click on Signature Panel and it opens up. You can see, move this out a little bit more, okay. And it tells you, signature is valid, document has not been modified since the signature was applied, signer's identity is valid, signature is timestamp, but the timestamp could not be verified. Well, obviously time zones, things like that, but they can go and see it. Sign signature details, last checked, digitally verifiable PDF exported with or from DocuSign, certificate details, click on that, and it'll give you more information. Tells you about the revocation, which is supposed to be part of the e-sign and seal law, is that a consumer has the right to revoke their signature. Uh, field one signature, invisible signature. That's what DocuSign has in there that tracks if you make changes. So if I click validate all and I want to just double check it, it's now going to go out and come back and tell me completed validating all signatures. Now, what you guys saw me do before on section 32 of our contract. I'm going to do it here again, too. I'm going to go up to my typewriter and 
seller to pay 100% of closing costs. Now notice immediately at least one signature requires validating. Okay, so let's validate all again because now it's noted that there's been a modification. Completed validating all signatures. Annotations created. Free text annotation on page 8. Click on it and it'll show you exactly what happened. So here it is. And there's another one. You can see there's another text box there. So I've made a modification to the document and in doing so the signatures are no longer valid because it's the audit trail. Okay? So, validity is unknown, signature not yet verified, identity has not yet been verified. So, by making that change, you invalidated the verification and authentication. So, once I validate all again, it still says, signed and all signatures valid, but with unsigned changes after the last signature. So, that's what happens with sort of what they're doing on it. So, you've got this, and then it's also picking up an extra text box. So it's a little smarter, a little more secure, and now you know that nobody is going to be messing with the document because it is really setting the industry standard. Let me see if I can find that other text box to get rid of it so I can show you guys how it goes away. Validate. I should probably just put the object tool on. Allocations created. Oh, see, now it's got two of them. And if I get it just right, I should be able to get rid of it. Let's see. Down here. Ah, well, anyway. Um, so, just for the record, can't modify or annotate. And if you'd like, I can demonstrate it one more time. But as well, once I look at this, if I want to go to the actual signatures, on the DocuSign and double click, it will open the certificate. The click signature is verified as valid. Enter the document I envelope ID found in the upper left corner of the document to view the details. So I was logged out, that's why. If I was logged in, it would have shown us a very interesting document and it would actually have shown us something similar to this. This is um, from the Bank of America standards for electronic signature. And they're actually using a DocuSign envelope um, oops, I lost my page. Oh no. Darn, darn, darn. Let me go back. Oops, there it is. So they're using a DocuSign envelope. I think it's DocuSign. Looks like it. Yeah, it is. Um, a DocuSign envelope example of our certification. Yeah, subject, please DocuSign this document as what their standards for security level because it has security level email, account authentication access code authentication, you know, it's using the IP address, all of the different things, ID check, um, everything that's required to meet the uh, international e-signature standards. So that is why you want to watch for the validity and true three best practice standards on anything. So I'm not going to show you how to hack it, but I have seen it done. You can change the price. You can do all sorts of crazy things and it still shows valid. But 